The world is constantly changing, and the ability to adapt to changes is one of humanity's most important and unique skills. A major change that has recently come to the forefront of controversy in both science and politics is global warming. But there is a varying degree of knowledge on this subject. So how much do people know about global warming? We asked some individuals whether global warming is fact or fiction. I think it's fact. I think it's a fact. Global warming is a fact. Global warming is like historical fiction. It's, it's propaganda. I've been hearing lots of different things on it, actually, right? I used to think it was definitely a fact, but now I'm kind of questionable. I don't know. But I still am leaning towards more that it's a fact than not, so. You know, what's amazing to me is that I keep being asked the question, is global warming really happening? Because in the scientific community, this was settled years ago. <laughs> you know, the climate scientists said a long time ago, you know, we're pretty sure that greenhouse gas emissions are causing a rise in temperature. And the report that is just coming out, the fourth IPCC assessment report, the summary for policymakers came out on Friday, and they've made that statement even stronger in the most recent report. If we look at the recent Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a group of over 600 scientists who have summarized the findings in the literature, and it has been reviews, reviewed by approximately another 600 scientists, that's a lot of scientists who actually looked at this issue and they've come to a very strong consensus that global warming is occurring. Scientists have indeed concluded that global warming is a fact, yet there are many who reject the idea that we have an issue on our hands. This may be partly due to a lack of adequate knowledge of the subject. So what exactly is global warming? The globe gets warmer. I really don't know anything about it. It's like the ozone, right? Everything getting messed up, it's overheating. Uh, there's holes in the atmosphere caused from pollution. The ozone is depleted enough to where, uh, from due to carbon monoxide or whatever, or some other force, and so the sun hits the earth more directly and causes the earth to warm. Everything getting messed up. You know, kids growing teeth early. <laughs> Global warming refers uh, to the fact that the planet is warming. That's the most uh, simple way to express it. Uh, however, what it uh, really is related to is changes in the atmosphere. Uh, our atmosphere acts in much the way that a greenhouse does, in that it traps heat coming in from the sun uh, on the planet, rather than letting it uh, radiate back out into space. And as we change the composition of the atmosphere, it changes the intensity of that greenhouse effect. And what's happening now is the composition of the atmosphere is changing uh, such that the intensity of that greenhouse effect is increasing and the planet's getting warmer. So the planet is getting warmer. Big deal. Does that just mean longer summers and warmer winters? Or are there more subtle effects that aren't immediately apparent? What I would want people to know about global warming is that it's more than just the warming of the atmosphere, that there are other consequences of this warming. Because if you warm the atmosphere, you warm the oceans, you warm ice sheets, uh, you lead to increased melting of ice sheets, which raises sea level. If you increase the temperature of the oceans, that has all kinds of impacts, not all of which we understand, but certainly can be very harmful to uh, not just humans, but other species that humans rely upon. For example, uh, coral reefs are important. Uh, part of the food web in the ocean, they could be adversely impacted by warming. And the decline of coral reefs would lead to a fallout of all kinds of other uh, impacts on ecosystems in the ocean. So it's this chain reaction that simply warming the atmosphere a few degrees can have on uh, many other aspects of our planet. This is sounding pretty bleak. Global warming does have some quite serious repercussions for the future, but there are actions which can be taken. What must individuals do to combat the effects of global warming? So the combination of people, individuals changing their behavior, so lowering their own footprint by getting more uh, fuel economical cars, uh, lowering their use of energy at home. It's been estimated that uh, if everyone had their tires properly inflated in the United States, that we would save approximately a quarter of a million barrels of oil a day simplest thing to do there is make sure your tires are improperly inflated. And then finally, another very simple thing that you can do every day is uh, 
do all of your wash in cold water. There are now lots of uh, detergents that uh, are out there that allow us to do that, saves lots of energy. So there are lots of simple things that we can do as individuals to begin to lower our energy footprint. I think if people knew more about global warming and its certainties and uncertainties and more about the potential uh, consequences of it, as, as we talked about earlier, for other parts of the planet, then people might be more motivated to change their uh, personal conservation habits. So it really comes down to awareness after all. People simply have to learn about global warming if anything's to be done about it. Environmental groups have tried to reach the American people through public service announcements, but they can't force them to listen. People are required, however, to attend public school until a certain age. So how effective is public schooling in educating people on global warming? We asked our friends on the street whether they had learned about global warming in school. No, in school I didn't learn. We didn't get taught that. And I was in gifted and talented classes, so and we still didn't touch that topic. So We touch on it here and there, but that's about it. That's about it. Not really, no. <laughs> I didn't. Schools in Europe and in California have already begun to change their curricula to be more proactive, informing students about global warming. From there, the power of knowledge will lead students to make responsible decisions in both personal habits and political voice. They will be doing their part to mitigate the effects of global warming on our planet. The rest of the world must follow their lead and through education systems teach people to be alert to the changes that our planet is undergoing and what those changes mean for us as a struggling human race.